Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Underwater Photography Show. I am Matthew Sullivan. And I'm Alex Mustard. And I'm going to ask the questions today. And I'm really keen, having talked about my gear, to um, hear about Matt's gear. So, Matt, what are you shooting at the moment? All right. So I'm going to have to bend down and pick stuff up off the floor because I don't have a convenient table next to me. Um, but you disappeared. Uh, my, current... <laughs> <laughs> uh, my current camera is a Sony A9, uh, the original version. Um, still a pretty beastly camera. Uh, lower resolution. It's only 24 megapixels. That doesn't really bother me. I shot a D700 for the past six or seven years. Um, so that was only 12. So this is a considerable step up for me with regards to that. Uh, really fast tracking. Uh, I almost never take it off of the tracking modes because it's it does a really nice job. Um, and attached to it is the converted uh, Nikonos 13 millimeter uh, autofocus lens for Sony. Uh, well, so I think little... you've, you've got to put that, in, turn it around so we can see like the top of the, the lens. Because, um, well, almost no one in the world has ever seen one, so I'm keen to see <laughs> so, uh, it. That is that guy. Another little plug for, for Isaac's conversion there. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and um, if you haven't heard of that, we have got a video on the channel about that. Now yeah. we have a channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so currently I'm shooting this little sea frogs housing. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a Kraken crossbar here, which is mm -hmm. really convenient because I can add... It has a bunch of different threaded holes, so I can add all sorts of um, accessories on the top there. Uh, uh, you need to on... keep it in front of you, otherwise it's green screening out. Sorry. Uh, uh, on the front there is the yeah, underwater, underwater part of the uh, Nikonos 13 mil. So it has the original 13 millimeter glass uh, inside a custom port. Um, the Sea Frogs housing, uh, I'll say it is what it is. Uh, you get what you pay for with it. Uh, it's only a $500 housing. Um, I had Isaac or asked Isaac to do some custom modifications for it so that it makes it a little more user friendly. Uh, so one thing he did besides all the besides the custom 13 millimeter port is he attached or he drilled out an M16 uh, bulkhead here, which allows me to use a monitor uh, because Sea Frogs does not allow or they don't have any external viewfinders and using the rear LCD for muck diving or for when using the EMWL is just about impossible, uh, or at least at the very least, it's very unpleasant. Um, so speaking of monitors. So uh, is th there's I, enough space though inside the housing to connect the monitor cables. Yeah. So it's it, quite, it looks like a very compact housing. It is, which is one of the nice things about it. Um, yeah. It does. So the, the monitor I'm using, which I'll show in a second has a ribbon cable inside. So it doesn't take up very much space, uh, okay. uh, just enough space inside to allow the um, the, H, the micro USB to plug in. Uh, speaking of not a lot of space, though, <laughs> the cameras, at least in this particular housing, do not sit well. So it's kind of a gamble whenever you put it in as to what buttons will or will not work. Um, so I have become pretty anal about checking ahead of time to make sure everything lines up. Uh, and inevitably it still doesn't always do that. Um, but as long as the autofocus works and the aperture and shutter speed controls work and the shutter works, that, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I, I've, um, I've obviously seen quite a few sea frogs housings around. Um, what I was curious about though, someone like you is, are you able to easily mount different ports on it or are you using all sea frogs ports? So right now, the only two ports I have are the 13 millimeter port. And then Isaac built me a custom uh, 90 millimeter port uh, with the Nauticam bayonet part built into the front so that if I have bayonet attachments, I can just attach them right on. So there's no threads, yeah. um, but I rarely use I rarely use anything with threads anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Frogs does make a lot of ports, but they're I, I personally I don't feel that I the need to invest in any of them because the main things I shoot are fisheye and macro and I have those two ports covered yeah. now. Um, it would be nice to do a um, like a custom port for the 20 to 60 that has a bayonet and then use the WWL or something like that. But I've had a lot of problems with this housing, so I don't anticipate using it for much longer uh, just because A, it's not a lot of fun to have buttons constantly not working. Um, and B, I have had a lot of water intrusion issues, some of which I've been able to eliminate. Some of them 
I have no idea how they're getting in. So it's just kind of a crap. Water intrusion issues is quite a, a nice remote way of talking about biblical floods. <laughs> yes. Um, so I've had a couple bad floods and then a couple minor floods and even the dives when everything seems to be working properly, inevitably I'll take the camera out and there's water in from somewhere. Um, so I don't anticipate using this too much longer, but I have a couple, couple things coming up that I would like to use it for. So hopefully it survives those. Uh, mm -hmm. but we'll see. I've uh, often considered like, you know, getting a, a really cheap and basic housing for, for cameras, particularly for like a, a second camera rig or for using as a pole cam rig, rather than putting a great big heavy metal housing on the end of a pole cam, you know, much better to have a, um, small light plastic, maybe not the most ergonomic housing, but very light and easy to maneuver on the end of a pole yeah. cam or something like that. So it's funny you mentioned that because one of the main reasons uh, I talked to Kraken about the crossbar is because mm -hmm. I had an idea for a pole cam shot that I haven't done yet. Um, but I will say that rig is very light in the water, which is nice. You can easily yeah. shoot it with one hand without having to do any real adjustments to flotation or anything like that, which is nice. Um, does it make up for the ergonomics or the flooding? <laughs> Not really. Um, but I think if you can eliminate the flooding issues, it would be a decent backup rig or like you said, a pole cam rig. Um, but just you have to be aware, obviously, of the limitations compared to some of the higher end housings. Kind of one of the things I'm really interested in was asking you about shooting with a monitor because I've always shot all my mirrorless cameras um, using the EVFs on them and then buying expensive viewfinders for those EVFs to really yeah. get the most out of them. But I, I, I do know, I mean, you know, I've had people, you know, on, on my trips, you know, shooting with, with um, using monitors and they, the people that have them really love them. So I'm curious to yeah. hear your thoughts. So I was always never really interested in monitors. Um, and then the genesis of me starting to use one was Nauticam lent me the EMWL. And because Seafrogs can't attach an external viewfinder uh, and you can't flip the LCD screen on the camera itself, uh, the solution was to use a monitor. Fortunately, Kraken came came to the rescue. So this is the monitor I currently use. It is their seven inch monitor. I can see myself in the monitor yeah. on a green screen. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's big. It's bright. It is pretty heavy, um, which actually for the Sea Frogs housing works out well because it, it lowers the buoyancy a little bit or mm. makes it a bit more negative. Um, the it's fully functional, so you can flip it, you can reverse it, you can do all that kind of stuff. So for the EMWL, which if you're not using the relay part uh it inverts the image which makes it much more difficult to shoot so this allows you to flip the image back and some of your settings are still going to be backwards but that's pretty easy to figure out um and it allows you to compose properly yeah. uh it's it can display 4k if your camera can do that um mine does not but you know it's still still plenty easy to see uh, it has three different spots for bulkheads. It has one on the bottom, two on the top, uh, M16 and M24. It comes with both adapters. Um, and I've now used it, started to use it for just general muck diving as well, uh, because without a 45 degree viewfinder, cranking your neck into weird positions gets very old very quickly. Um, this allows me to just put the camera on the bottom or get really low and shoot up if I have to, whether it's yesterday I was regretting not having it because I found my first frogfish of the season. Um, and I didn't have this. The frogfish was up off the bottom a little bit, but still in a pretty unpleasant position to get into. So I was contorting myself into all sorts of weird angles to, to get the shot. Monitor would have come in helpful for that. Mm. Um, so I really, really enjoy it. I'll probably start using it most of the time. And one of the nice things about this is it's not housing specific so any housing that has an m16 or m24 which most of the newer housings have um you can it's just plug and play and it comes with all the parts for it which is nice there is a five inch monitor as well which i also have um but i prefer the seven because it's actually thinner than the five inch uh, and the bigger screen is nice and it's not appreciably bigger that it makes it a pain in the butt to to use instead of the five um but yeah, really, really nice monitor. I like them a lot, and I've recommended monitors now to a couple friends who have ended up buying them. Yeah, really, so. in really interesting to hear because you know I've just never 
consider going down that route. And it's, yeah, it could be a really good option. I think particularly, you know, if you've got the monitor for something else, I think it's very rare to see stills photographers using them. So, yeah, really, really interesting to hear. Um, what about lighting? Yeah. So oh, one more thing on the monitor. One of the other reasons I use it, and I'll bring up Isaac again, um, he shoots a lot of freshwater stuff and he uses a monitor. That's another environment where they're really helpful because you're often in very shallow water mm -hmm. and you can just hold the camera down with the monitor facing you and see exactly what you're doing instead of trying to wedge your face into three inches of water or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so another another useful feature of the monitor. Um, lighting. So currently, my personal strobes, I am still shooting a set of the Retro original flashes. I have to hold um, it in front of you, otherwise it's green oh, screening sorry. again. Yeah. Yep, sorry. Still getting used to that. Um, still shooting a set of the Retro original flashes. Uh, they're still going strong. Never had issues with them. Um, I love them as a macro strobe or a close focus wide angle strobe. Um, for general wide angle, they're nice too. But compared to some of the newer flashes that are out now, they don't have as much power. Um, and they don't have that round flash tube. They still have the, the circular or the square one. Um, still really nice light. Uh, and we were talking about it in one of our other episodes with, I think it was your gear episode with regard to the, the Pro Max. Really, yeah. really nice wide angle strobe, really nice ergonomics. Maybe not the best for macro, um, but I think Retro nailed the macro strobe with this guy and it can be used really well for, for wide angle as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I... One thing that I wish Retro would do, but I understand why they don't, um, is I wish they would do some sort of battery pack. I love battery packs. Uh, I don't like dealing with all the double A's, um, but I can understand the convenience of double A's, especially with all of the issues that lithium batteries are having. Uh, it's probably the safer way to go. Um, yeah, but battery packs can be built around nickel metal hydride. Um, yeah. And I think, for, yeah, sorry, my but, downside on battery packs is... Um, is really the expense is that yeah. I've never seen a manufacturer who does battery packs who then sells them for a price that's anything comparable to buying buying batteries. Yeah. And I do think they're nice to take out. I think one thing that's nice about the Pro Max is, is that because all eight batteries, if you have the, the booster on the back, are all in one compartment, you simply take that compartment, open it out. And I, on, on the last trip, I was saying that I would I could get all the batteries out and on charge within for both strobes within about 40 seconds just because you just yeah. pull them out it all falls out you stick them on the chargers and you're done and it's it is i think that's made it easier but yeah it's it's not as convenient and you can't you know if you have a big battery pack you don't it doesn't fall on the floor and roll underneath the table and all that sort of <laughs> stuff so um but yeah. i have to say having had my my previous strobes to the retros with the c cams with battery packs and you know, c cams not renowned for having cheap items but you know the battery packs were the price of some strobes, so yeah. um, it was yeah I was I was happy not to be having to to pay for that because if you have battery packs you know and you're planning to shoot all day you generally need you know at least a spare for each flash gun so it, it adds a lot to the cost of of a, of, of a gear um, setup. Whereas so I think, yeah, so one thing I actually enjoy about the battery packs at least for so I haven't used every strobe with a battery pack but the ones I've used are the Icolite DS two thirties which mm -hmm. is an awesome awesome strobe and that battery seems to last weeks i have no idea how long it lasts but forever it's seemingly um and the kraken strobes which are my other strobe currently um, which we'll get into in another in another episode but um i those if you're shooting them at lower powers they seemingly never run out um and admittedly i'm not a high volume shooter so i don't go out and shoot thousands of pictures in a day but if you're out for if you're even out for a whole day and the strobes are on the whole time it's nice to not even have to think about the battery Level. Yeah, yeah. And at least with the older retros, they had a, a thing where if you left the batteries in for too long, they would drain, which I found out the very first time I tried to use them and I put them in overnight. And then the next day I was frantically uh, messaging Oscar as to how my I, how I had broken my strobes already. Um, so it's nice that, that the, the battery packs, you don't have to worry too much about that, um, at least not anymore. Um, and that's I have some other random bits and bobs, but that's the basics. Well, of can what I see the doing. Kraken a little bit? I know we'll probably we're gonna, you're gonna record an episode on it, but yeah. it's a yeah, it's a it's a nice 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 unit. Like it's got lots of power. Um, yeah. Circular flash tube. Yeah. Nice LCD on the back. Um, but yeah, we'll go into that in a in a in a future episode. Um, mm. But that's it right now. They are bigger than the retros, of course. Um, mm. Thinner, actually which is nice for getting them in tight to the handles, but they are quite, 
quite a bit bigger and they are at least out of water they are very heavy uh, i said in my review on dpg that they'd probably be at, as at home hammering nails into a two by four as they are taking underwater pictures because they are built very very well um, but we'll go into that in, an, in another episode um, and then random bits and pieces i have i have the sony 90 mil macro i have a couple diopters and then all sorts of different random lighting accessories these are custom ones that isaac did for me um but that's the gist of my uh underwater gear at the moment awesome well it sounds like with these comments like um, at the moment and coming through the conversation <laughs> that maybe there'll be something on the horizon relatively soon for a change maybe nice. during this year so we'll have a yeah. catch up about that when it happens yeah for sure for sure cool well other than that thank you all for watching the underwater photographer show We'll be back with another episode soon. Bye-bye.